the... How, how long have I been out? Oh, why do I hurt everywhere? And why does my breath smell so bad? Oh, man. And how long has this thing light been on? Dang it! What the... I guess I just need to keep documenting so that way, once again, like I said in the first time, if I ever get murdered, at least someone is watching. Now, I just found something on the floor. So let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay, so we've got a movie and two blank Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Or face down Yu-Gi-Oh cards, anyways. So let's see what movie we got here. I mean, it's not like... Oh, gosh. It's Paranormal Activity 4. Paranormal Activity 4? Are you kidding me? I watched this movie and reviewed it years ago. Of course, my computer was crap back then, but the point is, why is he putting me through watching Paranormal Activity 4? My gosh, does he not know I have better things to do with my time? Which means he's probably left me a little message on my phone. So let's see what's up with that. Okay. I swear. All right, so let's see what we got this time. I'm gonna actually pull up a seat. I'm trying to figure out how I freaking changed clothes. All right, let's see what we got here, guys. Okay, so if you all heard that correctly, uh, apparently I have been put in a brand new game where I have to review this terrible movie. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to this. He left another one, so let's see what we got here. As you can see before, not only do you have the movie of Paranormal Activity 4 before you, but you also have two blank Duel Watchers cards face down before you. What's going to happen is as such, every couple times you will hear an alarm go off, and during so long, you must flip a card. If you flip the good card, you are safe and are able to continue the review. If you flip the bad card, something will happen to you involving some Paranormal Activity. From the good old buddy Springtrap moving closer to you, you know, are are you kidding me just reveal to me who the heck you are so i can do whatever i what un undo whatever i did so we can get past this and i can go back to my normal life I mean, my gosh, this is getting more serious every single time. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm going to sit down and watch Paranormal Activity 4. Oh, gosh. I don't want to. Thank you all for at least witnessing this. And I'm hoping that I'll be back in at least an hour and a half to two hours. I don't know. This movie is very stupid. I guess it's true. Guys. So, as you all know, I have been challenged with not only going back and reviewing Paranormal Activity 4, but with dodging and experiencing some Paranormal Activity. So, I hope you're ready to see me squirm again, and like I said, you guys are my audience, so if I die, someone can find this camera and hopefully report this to the police and somehow catch this psycho who's doing this to me. But anyways, let's talk about Paranormal Activity 4. So I will at least say, this movie actually does start with consistency! It starts with it, but I honestly think it forgets it. Because this movie actually does start with how Paranormal Activity 2 ended, because 
if you want to go in the proper order of the, of the movies, we have Paranormal Activity 3, the prequel, 2, 1, and then this one. I will say at least this, before everything gets awful, uh, this movie does actually start by using the camera correctly and actually having a good reason for it. Because we are introduced to our main character, Alex, and actually in this movie she is playing a legit 15 year old because she was legitimately a 15 year old in this movie. She is using a video camera to record her little brother playing a soccer game. You know, they're at a sporting event, they're at a family thing. Using the camera like that is fine. And they actually are able to use this to set up the dynamic that this family is in. We meet her brother, and then we get the dynamic of the parents. We see the mom and dad who are, of course, having issues. You know, the dad is late, and I think he's honestly always trying to distract his son by, you know, like giving him, like, you know, toys or something to try to show, hey, I still care but work is more important. They don't ever really mention that, but it is hinted at. So, you know, props there, nothing's changed there. Family going through a dynamic, nothing's changed. But, you know, we do see the kind of character that Alex is, and she's a good big sister. You know, she's trying to protect her little brother from what's going on by, you know, distracting him, be like, hey, come here, or, you know, oh, let me show you this, this is really cool, look at this on my laptop, you know, stuff like that. So, it is a really interesting way that the camera's actually used. It's a shame that it's not used correctly throughout the rest of the movie. And I'm honestly using my script so that way I can at least be able to tell when this is going to happen. I can some way counteract what's going to happen to me tonight. This is going to suck. Okay, so I have reviewed the first section of the movie. Let's see if there's any paranormal activity to behold. Okay guys, so uh, as I had just got up from my seat to see if anything had happened. So as you can see, I have two face down dual monsters cards on a box, just a random box. So you know what? This is going to be a game of chance like Joey Wheeler in almost every single duel he was ever in. And luck always either got him the victory or close to the victory. So we are going to just see what happens. I'm right handed, so you know what? Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, man, I got a skull dice. Shoot. Okay, uh, I just drew a skull dice. So I'm guessing that's what happens when I, you know, when something bad's gonna happen, skull dice. Oh boy. So that means graceful dice must be the good card. Okay, uh, guys, bear with me. Something bad's gonna happen. I just know it. I guess, I guess we're gonna have to be in waiting <clears throat> because, uh, oh boy. I mean, I'm telling you guys, I've never honestly been this scared in my entire life. Okay, um, so I don't know if you guys just heard that. Someone was knocking out my freaking door. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna move to another room so that way I can maybe somehow throw this off. Uh, maybe I can get away from these cards and I'll just review the movie somewhere else. Uh, guys, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, so as you all just seen, I had a scare and a visit from freaking Lisa knocking on my door. So, you know, there's that. So this is very real, and the person who's doing this to me is honestly probably getting a kick out of this and eating popcorn in his probably devilish hell room while listening to Highway to Hell. I don't know. I just figured that's what all evil people do. Okay, so it looks like that reviewing parts of the movie and parts of my notes, if I can somehow time that in all together, I might actually have a chance to beat this. And nothing bad happened to me this time. Let's hope. So as I was saying, you know, we get to know Alex and what kind of sister she is and what kind of character she is. She is very smart, and we also get introduced to the character of Ben. Now I don't know. I do not remember the actor's name, but I do remember him in a show that I really liked that came on Nickelodeon a couple years ago. If you guys remember the name of that show, put in the comments below because I really liked him. I thought it was kind of cool. But you know what? They do kind of have this subtle relationship between Alex and Ben. And, you know, it's clear he's trying to get something, but she's not having it. But also, it, it kind of seems like there's this really interesting chemistry that goes back and forth. And, like, he's trying to hit on her, and he's going, like, oh, you know, uh, like, he'll put a, his hand on her leg and be like, oh, you know, is this too much? And she's like, I don't know. This is kind of weird. Do you want to go see my castle? Like, 
hinting at like you know they're gonna do something and obviously they're not so we get like this kind of playful banter but these characters are really interesting alex being the really smart one and ben you know being ben kind of like the he's kind of like the goof but he's kind of like this family friend but there would have been a really great opportunity to explain why they're carrying the camera all the time other than the fact that this is a paranormal activity every paranormal activity has to have that formula i get it but every other single movie explained it really well the first one there was something going on in the house mika wanted to record it to see what he could do to stop it and help his girlfriend the second one they thought someone broke into their house so they were using security cameras to watch the family because it made them feel safe three the stepdad or the boyfriend of the mom of the girls thought something weird was going on he wanted to record it and catch it so he could get a glimpse of what was going on this nothing nada there's no reason for him carrying around the camera or alex even carrying around the camera it's just a, oh hey you're carrying around that camera again they could have maybe said something maybe um ben was really into filming things or you know they could have just mentioned like oh are you gonna make something out of this or is just a this just a hobby that you like to do why are you carrying around that camera well, actually, they do ask him that, but they just never give him a valid reason, or Alex, for that matter, for carrying around the camera. Other than the fact this is a paranormal activity movie, we've got to have that formula. But this movie never specifies what the status is of Alex and Ben, and it kind of works. It really does. It really does. Now, all I have done so far is talk bad about this movie, but... I honestly do feel like they did have some good ideas and they executed them well. So one of the main things that this movie does have going for really well is the whole thing with the Xbox Connect. Now, they must have some really good expensive cameras because they're, this one camera has night vision and some other feature, I think that has red in the name, but the fact of the matter is, is uh, Ben places the camera on top of the shelf and he turns the lights off and you get like this really cool thing with like all these spotlight, like these little tiny dots and stuff like that. And that makes up for some really good scares from Alex's little brother running around the house and you see him and his little friend, who is the probably like the best actor in the movie, this little creepy kid, Toby, or not Toby, Robbie. Robbie, you see this little kid, Robbie, him and the, the little brother just running around, but you also see like this other figure. You see Toby running around. He's the size of a kid in this movie, and he like you can see like, him creeping up on like, the little kid and stuff like that, and it actually does create for some really good scares and some really good scenes, because you'll see Robbie sitting on the couch and uh, looking at what's going on, or like you can even see like something in the shadows with this effect, and it is really good, and that's something I will say. The Paranormal Activity movies are always able to come up with something interesting in every new film until we get to number six. Another really interesting mechanic that they actually do have in this movie is the garage, um, uh, the door opening voice. Because, you know, whenever you hear someone open the door, it's always like front door open. But there are times in the movie when you know no one is home except for one character. So you're thinking, ooh, who is it? And it actually makes it unsettling, that voice front door open you have no idea who's coming and it works really really well and that is something that i actually do applaud them uh they, they, they were able to do because it actually made that door chime scary okay guys so as you can tell a clock is going off so that means it's time for me to i guess flip another card but i don't see them maybe i actually beat it maybe i did <sighs> okay uh, nothing okay nothing here but uh shoes and, and my clothes and of course you can see my notes and oh gosh darn it are these cards haunted too okay uh uh all right uh well uh, i chose that card last time and it was skull dice so i'm gonna go the ladder here and oh my freaking gosh it's another skull dice. What's gonna happen now? Guys, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen now. The guy didn't say what was gonna happen. He just, or he didn't say when it was gonna happen. He just said it was gonna be something at random. I mean, I honestly don't know like what else is gonna happen, man. I don't know if it's freaking spring trap or, or, or Freddy Fazbear or, or what, man. I, I really don't freaking know. <laughs> This isn't funny anymore, man! Who's doing this? Please make it stop! Make 
it stop. Please make it stop. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I'm gonna move to another uh, to another room. <sighs> Wish me luck. Hopefully, I get something better than the skull dice. <sighs> okay, I'll see you guys soon. So, uh, if you guys have decided not to click off this video, uh, I just had a visit from Freddy Fazbear and apparently his whole crew. Of course, though, by his whole crew, it was only Foxy who also accompanied him. So, I survived another one. He must be getting a kick out of this, whoever the person is. But, let's continue with the review. One of the most annoying things in this movie is the freaking parents, okay? Even though the acting is good from the parents, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, the acting, or the the way how they written the parents is just awful, and not because you know the mom and dad are having problems. No, that's fine, but the whole entire thing of where they are showing legit evidence of something that is going on, and like they're showing the dad that something something went down in the house, and he's just like, it's like, oh man, that's unbelievable. You kids are good with this stuff, and and it just makes you like, bro. Are, are you kidding? There's like legit paranormal activity right in front of your freaking face and you're just being like, man, you kids are good. I need you all to figure out, uh, teach me how to work my phone. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Or the fact of Kate, uh, Alex is showing her mom, hey, Robbie climbed into bed with me and did this and it was weird. And the mom's just like throwing up a buttload of excuses like, well, you know, he, he's here by himself. He doesn't really have anybody. You know, so he probably gets scared. You know, he's seen his mom get carried off to the hospital. And it's just so benign how ignorant these parents are. And it's just so dang annoying because a majority of the time, there were good reasons for people not believing what was going on from Daniel in the second one just not wanting to believe it. You know, like even though like deep down he knows what's going on, but he's just, you know, trying to deny it. You know, like that macho man kind of, oh, nothing's nothing's going on. No, that that's nothing. Oh, I can take care of this myself. Uh, I, there's there, there's a there's a logical explanation for this. To the mom in Paranormal Activity 3 being like, oh, kids are like that. You know, uh, freaking Katie fell asleep on the toilet when she was like five. Uh, you know, Toby will be gone they always had good explanations for why things were going on and like you know even though they were wrong they were acceptable explanations this no we get a total 180 and it's just so dang annoying it makes you want to claw your eyes out but whenever there's something bad it is somewhat some it is somewhat followed up with something that is actually interesting and a somewhat interesting scare because we have a scene in this movie that is actually very Hitchcockian. There is a scene involving this knife because the mom uses a laptop to, uh, you know, work on recipes and stuff like that. She's got like this huge knife, like freaking Michael Myers would probably use, like having his collection that he never takes out and just keeps all shiny. And the mom is going to go do something and then all of a sudden, shweet, the knife just goes, uh, j just disappears. And the mom's just like, what? And whenever someone was going into the kitchen, you know, you were honestly wondering, okay, is that knife going to drop? What the heck's going to happen? What the heck's going to happen? But they just don't capitalize on it, right? You could have had people on the edge of their seat through the entire movie. And they just didn't, they just didn't capitalize on it. And it just, it's so frustrating. It's like in South Park when they freaking were able to get the town back by gambling. And then they get greedy. And then Stan's like, they had it! There are multiple times in this movie where they had it. And it's just so dang annoying. And I just wanted to stop. And I wanted to get good. Okay, guys, as you can tell, that's the chimes. So that means it's time to flip a card once again, but I don't see them anywhere. Which most likely what's gonna happen, I'm gonna turn my back, turn right around, and they're gonna be on my desk. Well, I guess it's time. Let's see what the cards hold this time. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, yes, I got some cool stuff, but I don't... Is anything over here? No. Well, I guess we need to check most likely where they're at. Oh, of course! Here they are! Shoot. Okay, guys, so... Left hand screwed me over. 
I'm gonna go with the right hand this time. Maybe I'll actually get a graceful dice. Right, part of the cards guide us. It's a graceful dice. Yes, oh yes, it's a graceful dice. It's a graceful dice. I'm safe, hallelujah. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen to me. I can continue the review. We're gonna survive. Thank you. Back to actually somewhat praising this movie. This movie, I will say, does a really good job at one particular thing. Distractions. It does a really good job at distracting you from what, well, of course, from what you're not supposed to see. But how they do it is really interesting and really well. They'll have you focus on something that's so, that you're supposed to pay attention to, but in the shadows or out of the corner of your, uh, of your eye, you'll see something. And this movie has many moments like that, and it actually makes you think, this could have been great! And that's the fact of the matter is, this movie does at times make you think, oh, maybe this is actually going to be something good, and then they turn right around, and they hit you with the, nope, it's a paranormal activity formulaic movie. That's it. This movie also feels hollow. It feels hollow because it feels like it's just doing the things that it does for the fact that it's a paranormal activity movie, and it doesn't give it any purpose. But then it has like some really, really good ideas. Something that actually could be done and could be made interesting. But they don't pull it very, they don't pull it all the way through. They don't pull the cord on it. They don't pull the get go. They don't hit the go button. They just hit the regular uh, formulaic button. And that's the problem with this movie. It is hollow and it has some interesting ideas, but it just doesn't me mesh well. So my final thoughts on Paranormal Activity 4. But before that, I'm going to get into the twist. There is a twist in this movie, and it makes no sense whatsoever. It completely takes the baby, kicks it over the fence. It literally kicks Paranormal Activity 2 off the radar. It makes Paranormal Activity 2's ending mean nothing, nothing whatsoever. And the twist being that Alex's little brother is actually Hunter from the second movie. The demon worked this entire, throughout that entire movie to get him, and then all of a sudden he's gone. So then Paranormal Activity 2 is pointless. It's worthless. That is honestly the main thing with this movie. The major problem is the twist along with the plot because it makes no sense. Why would the demon be working that hard to get the baby just all of a sudden lose it again, and then having to work to brainwash him to join the cult. Paranormal Activity 2 is meaningless with this movie. It, it really is. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, my final thoughts on Paranormal Activity 4, this movie gets a D. It gets a D. But let's actually go over what's good about this movie. Acting, ideas, some good tension, and distractions. Bad. The plot. The twist, logic, and unbelievable not good enough reason for using its own premise. Because how they film this movie is completely unbelievable. Because all they do is use laptops, and laptops will not record conversations for that long. Almost every other review I have ever seen of this movie does that. Every review I have seen of this movie, they say this is not plausible. This cannot happen. People have actually said that they have actually even tried it, and it doesn't work. Eventually, the computer will shut down, and then you'll have to start all over again. That's the major problem with this movie, is its own premise makes no sense and is unplausible to do. Guys, we did it. I got through another review. So what you gonna do now, huh? What you got now, weird, freaky person who's after me for no apparent reason? What you got now? So as you guys have just heard that, I guess that means that the game's not over yet. I'm gonna ask you this again. Who the heck are you? Guys?
heck is this? Okay, I've played your game twice, and I beat you both times. What do you got now, huh? Nothing. I'm un... I'm unbeatable. Ha, 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 ha.